This is Binghamton Now on News Radio 1290, WNBF Binghamton, and WNBF.com. I'm Bob Joseph. Now is the time to think about the future and talk about it on Binghamton Now. It's Monday, November 4th, 2024. Give us a call at 607 772 1290. Here we go again. It just never stops. It's a great program and it's getting greater. It will be even better if you are willing to contribute. We encourage all listeners to consider making a big contribution to Binghamton Now, 607-772-1290. We appreciate all contributions. Cash and small unmarked bills. Well, as we take to the air, what's on your mind? I was thinking over the weekend, we really have, uh, at this stage... After more than 10 months of 2024, we've pretty much run out of things to talk about. So I would be willing to talk about holiday recipes. If you have any special pies, cakes, or cookies that you and your family and friends will be baking over the next several weeks. Favorite pies? Do you like pumpkin? Oh, mincemeat made with real meat from those quarter pounders. Just hold the onions when you use (laughs) a quarter pounder meat for your uh, holiday pies this year. can never be too careful. So, yes, we'll we'll talk about uh, the holiday season. I am no Martha Stewart, but I certainly am willing to listen to people who have pro tips as far as holiday decorating and things of that nature. Because now is the season to think about the uh, decorations for your home or business. If you have um, special tips for maybe, say, your street, maybe you'll have a contest on your street. I know a couple of streets where people really work hard every year to outdo each other, right? I don't think it's a formal competition, but it seems to be a competition. I, I know one street in particular every year. It's more and more stunning. It's amazing. And these are people who put their hearts into their holiday decorations. So if you have... Uh, decorating tips whether it's for inside the home or for outside the home and now is now the best time to actually put up the decorations before the snow flies well we have uh, looks like tuesday and wednesday are going to be unusually mild so is it smart for people who are planning holiday decorations to get the decorations put up on their home or business this week it's a mild weather 607-772-1290, 907-772-1290, at WNBF. Good morning, your caller number one. Hi, it's Ron. Morning, Ron. I bet you're from Binghamton. I am from Binghamton, proud to be from Binghamton. Congratulations. Um, but uh, I don't know if I can say this morning that I'm proud to be from New York State. Um, I... Uh, I learned uh, through the newspapers that um, a squad of, uh, you know, um, tough-minded Albany bureaucrats and um, uh, police-type folks swooped down on Peanut the Squirrel and um, eradicated, euthanized Peanut. I think we can all breathe a little easier in New York State, knowing that Peppy, the squirrel that fits into a baseball cap, has been um, a 
eliminated and uh, we can go on with our lives. So I, I'm, um, you know, I don't know, I guess maybe I should be proud of uh, my state taxes and the ability of uh, uh, our state to take out this menace. Uh, I was thinking of doing something a little weird this year. I think at the top of my tree, I might put the replica of uh, Peanut the Squirrel uh, just to uh, make my statement about uh, overreaching and uh, using state uh, monies uh, for almost frivolous actions. Well, we'll see what the other viewers have to say about it. Well, and may I go on? Sure. There's nobody else calling in, so you can go. I'll tell you what. You, I'm going to allow you to go on until we get another caller, so that could be till noon. Oh, okay. Well, so I, keep, I, keep going, man. Yeah. Well, um, actually, uh, you know, tomorrow, I don't know if you knew this or not, but tomorrow's election day. And um, in fact, I vote. I I did vote Saturday up at the farmers market, and uh, you know I'm watching some of the shows today and trying to understand how we're deadlocked, supposedly uh, for Harris and Trump, and I, and I'm wondering where the motivations come from uh, deeper down for people to make the decision for Harris or Trump. And I, I came to the conclusion that we have two major voting types in this country. Now, um, this is a theory, and I'm breaking it down and simplifying, but I think you have people who are prone to go to the polls. They're waiting to go and vote, and they're, uh, they're using their intellect to uh, determine whom to vote for. And I think we've got people and a, you know, uh, maybe 50 percent of our population who I, I say uh, it's, it's, it's a visceral thing. They vote from the gut, not from the brain, but from the gut. And um in the in voting from the gut means that you often uh, make your decision uh, based on n non intelligent things. It's it's your uh, you're feeling uh, dispossessed or you're you're feeling uh, that uh, you're you're losing out in the American dream and uh, you need a champion who's going to stand up for you and and uh, uh, make you feel better in your gut. And um, you can, so I, I, I think we've got the intellectual, and I, I, I don't mean intellectual in terms of highbrow. I mean the, the thinking motivation to vote and the visceral motivation to vote the, from the gut. And I, I think, it seems to me, uh, if Trump is to uh, win the election, then the gut has won out, and uh, we, we've stepped back in our uh, American way of choosing a president. We're going to choose a president based upon you know what's in our belly instead of what's in our brain. We'll see what the other listeners have to say. Yeah, that, that's how I'm feeling okay. right. All yeah. right, I think I think uh, many listeners will agree with you. Well, let's see. Yeah, I well, don't know if I'm, I don't. Know if I'm looking mine. forward to uh, voting tomorrow. I revised my plan. I know for a while there, I was half jokingly saying I was going to wait till about the last possible minute and show up at my polling place around 8.59 Tuesday night, and then somebody pointed out that's probably it's probably a poor thing to be saying on the radio because that would only make life more difficult for the polling workers who already will have put in a long day. So I, I am not 
I changed my plan. I thought it would be cute. And if only one person did it at 8.59 tomorrow, it might be cute. But I don't want to encourage people to show up, say, at the last minute and then make make life a little more complicated for the people at polling places. So tomorrow the polls open at 6 a.m. I'll probably vote on my way into work that way. That way, if I get called out for a spe- some kind of special election coverage, I won't miss my opportunity. So, but I, yeah. I, I thought again, the the concept. Apparently, it was just a desperate bid at something that might be perceived by someone as funny. The concept of showing up with one minute to go probably is not the. It's probably not the smartest idea. Yeah, but it, it uh, you know, you you were in your youth some of the things you've said. You're you're you're, you're a rapscallion at, at, in, in nature, and that's why you were thinking of eight fifty nine just to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, to poke to 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 poke uh, the system a little bit. Well, and it also could could be argued just to to test just because they always say well if you're in in line at the time the polls close you get to vote so there could actually from a news standpoint be a legitimate reason to you know try that theory just to test it out if i was there at eight fifty nine, and then they said eh, nine o'clock it's too bad man too bad maybe you can vote for president in four years but should have gotten here five or ten minutes now that would be a news story but um, yeah, I have no reason to doubt that. Say, if if you legitimately show up late, that's fine. But you know, if you're if you're only trying to make things more complicated for people, I and that's not what I try to do. I, again, it was I think it was a well intentioned, desperate bid for humor on the radio, and as as so often is the case on this program, it it went over like a dead balloon. Well, Bob. Vote early. Vote, early. vote often, man. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Vote early. I'm kidding. Well, you said vote early and vote often. No wonder you don't believe in fair elections. Hi, 922 WNBF with the most calls in America. Hi, you're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? This is Matt from Binghamton. How are you today? Welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Thank you. And I just uh, wanted to, first of all, I hadn't had a chance to wish Ron back to the community. It's so great to hear his voice. And uh, and just uh, we're all worried about him, and now he's back. I like that. So anyway, um, I'm sure all the, most of the, the listeners do, too. Um, what's really instructive, I think, about tomorrow, and my predictions are that uh, it's going to be Welcome, Madam President, because Iowa, which is, there's a woman there that's been doing polls for the last three cycles. She's always dead on. And I don't know if you saw this, but she went, she went from eight, when Biden was in there, he was 18 points down. Harris is now leading by three points in the latest final poll in Iowa. Now that's only six votes, but it's 12, really 12 votes. If, if you win something you didn't have, it's, Six they didn't get, and six we get. So I, I'm very optimistic that that's the way, the, um, especially since uh, DJT didn't have any ability to pivot at all. His ads do because they're not being run by him, but his campaign st- uh, stomping across the country, um, he has gotten worse and worse and worse. And by the way, I, I really do want to ask you, do you think that you're safe if Donald Trump wins as a somebody who is could arguably be say be an enemy of the people? Hello. Oh, you were talking to me. Yeah. Oh well, I, really I, I think that. that's really yeah. I'll throw that. Sh- yeah, we'll toss that out to the viewers at home because I I think that's a good question and. Because right, you heard what he said yesterday about, uh, you know, he wouldn't mind seeing because uh, he had glass in front of him. And the only way they could shoot at him 
and possibly get him was if they shot through the press. And he said, oh, I wouldn't mind that if they had to shoot through the press. I don't think he, I think it was misconstrued by some people. I don't think he, I, I think the campaign also put out some kind of a statement to clarify. So I don't. <laughs> they always do. Of course they're going to clarify. Of course they're, he, he didn't, he didn't want the, I mean, fake news. Right now, fake news is, is sort of funny because we all know the origin of the phrase and it's right. all, all one can do is just shake shake one's head it's you know if you go through life with the belief the perception that everybody in the mainstream news uh, business whether it's in New York City or DC or even in Binghamton if you're saying that everybody who participates in so-called mainstream journalism is fake, then you clearly don't understand the concept. You know, reporters and editors and news organizations don't, don't work together. I mean, sometimes we'll collaborate. My uh, colleague at News 34, Jim Emke, sometimes contributes to this program, say if news breaks, when I'm here in the studio, Mr. Emke, uh, thoughtfully, after he's done doing his primary job for News 34, sometimes he'll call in to let us know what's going on. So sometimes there are collaborations, and sometimes I will work to collaborate or assist reporters with background or whatever. But news organizations generally, even in this strange era that we're currently in, where the news media have been downsized, we're still competitive. And we can't, you know, the, the, if you think, if you think that people who call this program sometimes are disagreeable, sometimes journalists in the same town can disagree about certain things. I mean, not, not violently, because most people in journalism exercise common sense and you know, we can disagree on certain issues or stories or whatever without being disagreeable. I mean, I, I think there's mutual respect. So anyway, we'll throw that out there. Thank you, sir. Especially this thing about the um, the media and, and what that one candidate actually meant by by his statement. <laughs> I I mean... He couldn't really have meant that he wanted reporters to be shot. It doesn't doesn't seem like something a former president would do. It's 928 WNBF. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Good morning there, Bob. Dave from Vestal. I am looking forward to tomorrow, Bob. Hey, how many times have we heard, I mean, I've even said it many times in my life. Trust your gut. I never hear anybody say, trust your brain. That could be pretty hazardous, especially to liberal progressives, the way I look at it. Uh, and speaking of brain, Bob, did you see, <laughs> you know, I got a big kick out of Mark Cuban there saying that Trump never surrounds himself with intelligent women. But yet he's supporting probably the most unintelligent presidential candidate in our history and she's a woman i think today's day you, you never know bob it's, it's a coin flip now when i go out in public i can't tell anymore all uh, right what else i'm going to tell you something else too and i forget what it was uh darn it was important too bob to me but not to you it's a shame Mind is a terrible thing. It, nah, sometimes it is, Bob. It really is. Yeah. Oh, but, well. oh, I know what I know what it was. My mother. I know, and everyone says this because everybody's mother made the best this and the best that because that's just how it is. You grew up on it, and that's how good it is. My mother made the best pumpkin bread, Bob. I mean, moist, gooey, delicious, good stuff. Um. No, my mother I made had... the best pumpkin bread. Hers was the really? best. Really? Yes, see. It was the best <laughs> darn pumpkin bread. So I don't know. I'm not disparaging your mom. 
But <laughs> if your mom were around today and she had a chance to try my mom's pumpkin bread, even she, even your mom would agree, mine is very good. But Bob's it, mom it, has Bob, has it, reached pumpkin bread perfection. It, Bob, it, my mom's too, so we'll both agree on that. But you know what? Here's a unique thing. When my mom baked hers, Bob, <laughs> she... She like greased somehow. She used empty coffee cans, so they were baked like yeah. You know, she probably she used, used lard. Yeah, but oh, Bob, was it good? Oh, so much. I don't know. Well, things thought. were better back then. Yeah, I, I mean everything. I trust me, everything was better back then. Everything. Yeah, yeah I I agree with that. Have, gas have prices. Day, gas prices were low. People were smiling. You'd have dinner. Every day, 5 p.m. or maybe 6 p.m. in the summer, so you could spend more time out playing with your friends all around the neighborhood. You'd go out, eat in the morning, you'd come back at 5.55, wash up for dinner, have yourself a mighty fine home-cooked meal. None of these radio dinners, internet dinners, pop them from the freezer, zap them. No, it's home-cooked home cooking there you go folks WNBF the station not afraid to tackle the most pressing issues including whose mom made the best pumpkin bread 607-772-1290 I'm Bob Joseph you're listening to Binghamton Now 92.1 FM 1290 AM streaming at WNBF.com whoa WNBF Yikes. It's 9.35. Gary from the West Side. Good morning. You're on the air. Thanks for playing the worst song of all time, Bob. No, I don't know what I that's... Know I, I, I really I really them. don't know what that's about. People love them. I don't know why. You know, they like to jump around and do the hands in the air trying to make letters that don't even look like letters when they're doing them. But it's that's neither here nor there. Our country's going to change for the good or the better here within the next couple of days, and hopefully it's for the better. And please vote, and whatever happens, please accept the results. But I want to talk about something that happened in uh, Binghamton a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to call in and talk, but I didn't get the chance. I don't have all the details in front of me, but it was a case where a uh, Binghamton police officer was, uh, I guess, being charged with... Uh, putting a knee on the neck of an individual that was in uh, around New Year's Day, and he was considered unruly. And the judge had to make a decision uh, about whether the police officer acted correctly. Do I have it mostly? Well, no. Uh, no, no the, okay. the, case, no, the case, which was um, a bench trial, which means there was no jury in yep. Binghamton City Court, um, this was Hamal Waddell, okay, who right. was convicted of okay. two misdemeanor charges. So the, the judge heard the evidence in the case and the trial. And I didn't cover the trial, so I, I, I followed some coverage on News 34 and some other websites, I think WSKG. Right now I'm looking at the story of all places, uh, Pipe Dream, the Binghamton University paper. Ella Connors wrote a story October 29th that said Judge Palella found Mr. Waddell guilty of two misdemeanor charges. And uh, Paul Battisti Paul Battisti, the DA, presented the charges against Waddell, who was apprehended on New Year's Day 2023. Video footage of Officer Brad Kaczynski of the Binghamton Police Department um, showed him kneeling on Mr. Waddell's neck and back during the arrest and said the story, Palilla's decision found Waddell guilty of resisting arrest and disorderly conduct. His attorney said while he respects Palella and appreciates his compliments of the defense's handling of the case. He disagrees with the verdict and he plans to file post-trial motions and begin uh, an appeal. 
And the, ju- uh, the attorney, Edward Kopko, said this case is only beginning. He said, we went through one phase of it. I will never let go of this case because there is an injustice here, and the injustice is typical of what happens with the police. Yeah, so where's the injustice? Uh, the poor kid being charged with the misdemeanors, or he wants to hang uh, the Binghamton police officer, right? So that's kind of the question. You know, yeah, you know Edward Kopko is welcome to call the, the program. He, he won't call. Well, he, I'm he, not saying he will. A, one, I'm not saying, by the way, I'm not saying he should either. I'm saying he's welcome. I just wanted, but by the same token, anybody, I mean, Paul Battisti, the DA, is welcome to call the program. The defense attorney, Edward Kopko, is allowed to call the program. Um, both um, Hamel Waddell and Brad Kaczynski could call the pro. Anybody can call the pro. I'm just pointing that out in case people didn't know how how we work here. The way the way I saw this case, Bob, I might be wrong, but this is just the way that I saw it. I saw that there was a lot of people that were supporting uh, Mr. Waddell, and okay, that's great. But if all you have are people around you telling you that you did nothing wrong, you're not guilty. It's just the police, you know, you're, you're going to believe that, especially a young individual. I think he's kind of being a little misguided. It's two misdemeanors. Okay. It should be, all right, you know what? It was New Year's Eve. Might've been alcohol involved. I should just let it go and go on with my life. But nope, it's got to be, you know, there's people probably telling him, no, you got to fight this. You got to fight this because we want to keep this going for for what reason i'm not sure it's a mister two misdemeanor cases and you're going to make a big deal out of this what do you want to do you want to hang the police officer because he put his knee on the neck i'm not sure what's going on i'm really not but i think that it should just be that was the judge's decision judge paula you know why not accept it and move on with your life or do you have too many people around you telling you that you shouldn't be doing that, that, you know, there's an ulterior motive here or something. I'm not sure what it is. It might be against the police. I don't know. Well, we'll see what our, we... our other viewers have to say. The thing that strikes me as interesting about the entire case, in fact, everything that happened since New Year's Day 2023, is at least on this program, there's been very little discussion of it. I've called in about it before, you know, right away. I didn't think, uh, you know, I wasn't sure whether the knee was on the neck. It seemed like it was more more on the, the back than the neck. But, uh, you know, it wasn't too – I asked uh, – you had a guy on here that was a young guy that used to fill in, uh, that worked with WNB. I can't remember. James, maybe, was his name? Oh, yeah, James. Maybe. James from Binghamton. Used to work here. He was part time here at the WNBF radio. Yeah, yeah. I asked him whether he thought that, uh, you know, that he thought that there was a knee on the neck, and he said he thought that there was. And it wasn't too much longer after that, Bob, that like he wasn't around anymore. I was wondering if that had anything to do with it, you know, because sometimes when you speak your mind, you're very wise. You know, sometimes I ask you questions and. You'd love to answer them, but you're on the radio, and you know, uh, you know, people can hold you where you work or whatever. So you, you know, you don't you answer some questions, but some questions you got to steer clear of. And you know, he answered the question. I don't know if your boss or whatever said, "Hey, you shouldn't be doing that." No, or whatever. But, no, well, okay, good. I, well, I can I can reveal to you the people here who run. The station and oversee ultimately Binghamton. Now they didn't say anything about it, so good. it's not not That's like any. When it comes to this case, no one has been muzzled. No one. So I mean, people who support the police officer haven't been muzzled. The people who supported the man involved in the incident that ultimately resulted in the trial they haven't been muzzled. Everybody in this particular case has been permitted to call if they want i will say and astute listeners will agree i have not 
gone out of my way to encourage discussion because this is and and some people say oh bob well th- then you're not a very good talk show host because any other talk show if this happened in new york city or chicago or la any good talk show host would have been all over this and and encouraged lots and lots of conversation about it well that's not me that's not how i approach something with that's sensitive yes i will talk about things and when people bring it up but i'm not going out of my way to potentially inflame tensions because i understand a bit about what people think about in cases like this and so i'm not i'm i'm a proud member of this community and so i'm i welcome conversation but as we've said before and some people really really don't like it that i i control the discussion because this is not the internet this is our community and this is wnbf radio this is not let's let's go wild in the streets if dan bongino was running the show it would be totally different fortunately dan bongino has a national show and he runs it the way he wants to, as he should. But this is a Binghamton-based program that cares about everybody in our Binghamton area. And I and I realize. And by the way, I fully appreciate the fact that I'm the only show in town like it. It's not as though I agree. it's not as though if if people don't feel their views are being properly represented by this show, well then they can go to the next WNBF local show and have their views properly represented because there's only one local show. So it's, it's a lot of responsibility for, for what I do. And I take it seriously. I agree. There was a time when the police could do no right. You know, not too distant past, you know, this all came about, you know, it was all police misconduct. And yet, while, yes, there were cases, absolutely, where the police could have done a lot better job. You know, this part here is you have to control unruly people. And sometimes you have to do things that are right on the borderline of being too aggressive. But, you know, a knee on the back of someone isn't too aggressive. You're charged with two misdemeanors. You're found guilty. Let it go. Let it go. Go on with your life. And yet, and yet, the Attorney General, Tis James, released a report that came to somewhat different conclusions. So everybody everybody can look at those videos, and everybody mm-hmm. can come up with their own conclusion about whether it was appropriate or not. The only thing I can say, yeah, but the only thing yeah. I can say is I wasn't there. I, I, I've looked at videos from what None transpired. No. No, well, Tish James didn't say that he was not not guilty of misdemeanors. Tis James was talking about the police. No, that's true. Actions, that right? she reviewed the actions of the police of officer. The police officer, so, not of his. But actions. some people have argued that under other circumstances, that this case would never have gone to trial. I mean, it's when's the last time in the city of Binghamton there was a trial? for someone charged with resisting arrest and disorderly conduct. I don't know. I don't follow that stuff. Yeah. Well, I I can't think of a time. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. Probably has happened. But hasn't happened recently. So some people have suggested that this case was treated differently than if there had been no allegations surrounding the, the police and the scrutiny and the video. So I don't know. It's... I, I welcome other people to call in and offer their assessments. Everybody's welcome. And so far, not many people have commented. But as I've said, the attorneys in the case are always welcome to call. Will they call? No, they won't. Will the people who were involved in this case call? No, they won't. And it, by the way, if I if I was an attorney representing either man involved in this case as an attorney i would recommend that they not call a radio station but everybody can make a decision attorneys as a rule 
always advise their clients, if there's going to be anything said in public, let me do the talking. That's why you hire an attorney. It's 9.49 at WNBF and WNBF.com. Heading back to the busy, busy phone lines, Beverly from the town of Dickinson. You're on the air. Hi, Bob. I got a good... Have you ever heard of hickory nut cake? No, but it sounds good. Yeah, well, I used to make one for Christmas for the family, and I made my father um, a hickory cake every year for his birthday. Unfortunately, I haven't made them in years. But that's a, that's a good recipe. The longer it sits, the better it tastes. Where do you get the hickory nuts? You know, Bob, at the time they were a reasonable price. But I don't know where you can get them. I, I'm going on the Internet cause I, to see where I, I, can, I can buy them. They used to, they used to have them at, at the Giant. That one time, but yeah, and then they closed. The, those guys closed the giant, though. Yeah, I know. See, that's why I missed the giant because they had hickory oh, nuts. I used to love the giant. Oh, it's and fr- and and, and fro joy ice creams. Oh yeah, they had uh, all the Crowley dairy products, the fine dairy products, Dairy Lee. They had Dairy Lee, Crowley, um, River Valley. They had the good brands. And now look, am I right? Yep. Another I say no. I say this is what I say, Beverly. And just between you and me, this goes no further. I say bring back the giant. I used to. I used to like that commercial. See you at the giant. I like that. I always wanted to know who sang that. It, it sounded like um, what? Uh, oh, Mariah Carey, and who was the other one? Who's the one, old blue eyes? It reminded me of uh, not not Frank Sinatra, the other guy with blue eyes. But wasn't that great? See you at the Giant. Yeah, I mean, um, even now it resonates. Here, too, here it is, decades later, and nobody has been seen at the Giant, at least at the Binghamton Giants, for a long time. If you want to go to the Giants, you have to go south, young woman. Right? Oh well, yeah. They have Giants, yeah. but they aren't the Binghamton Giants. No. And another one, too, is as you take dates and you cut them in half and take the seed out and you put them uh, um, vanilla um, frosting in it and you take um, uh, maple wal- ma- um, walnuts and you put them on top. Now, that sounds good. Yeah. You can buy, dates are cheap. The walnuts, eh, they ain't too bad. Yeah. But I like to get one that's, um. I want to get some, I want to get some hickory nuts. I don't know where you can get them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You said they don't have them at the Y's? No. Hmm. Wonder why. They have walnuts. Right. Well, every store has walnuts. About every store. I could go to lots of stores and get walnuts, but I want my kingdom for a bag of hickory nuts. I don't know where you can get them, Bob. I know. I know. 30 years ago, you could buy them anywhere. You know, and this is the greatest country in the world. But again, can you get hickory nuts? Can you get River Valley products? Can you get Frojoy ice creams? No. No. No, you know, get a gallon of ice cream for such and such a price, and now you only get you don't even get a gallon. No, a gallon they anymore. keep making the the things smaller, teenier, tinier. Same with the chips. When I was a kid, you could get a bag of Wise chips at the Giant for fifty nine cents, and it was a full pound. That was a pound of chips. Remember when Mr. Chip used to come yes. by Yes, and Mr. Yeah, Chip with them. Charlie Chip. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks for the memories. Okay. Bye-bye. I miss Charlie Chip. His chips were so crisp. The perfect chip from Charlie Chip. 
It's 9.57, Monday morning with the one and only Bob Joseph on WNBF. Joined now live by Congressman Mark Molinaro, the Republican incumbent in New York's 19th Congressional District. He's facing a challenge by Democrat Josh Riley. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Great. How's your voice? Your voice sounds a little scratchy. Well, it's a little scratchy, but it's much better than it was a week ago. Uh, you know, I, I think I talked to you the day of or the day after we did 11 counties in a single day, uh, really just to show our, our, you know, certainly our continued commitment uh, to be in the community. It's something that uh, that I, I take a, you know, I put a high priority on. You know, you can't represent people if you don't show up. And uh, we show up. Uh, I think you've heard me say the joke around town is that, uh, that that I'll show up to the opening of an envelope. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we, we like to show up and, and meet people where they are and, and, and try to confront the challenges we face. Here we are just hours away from the opening of the polls in New York State. They'll open at 6 tomorrow morning and be open all day till 9 tomorrow night. Over the last few days, what seems to be the biggest issue? Suddenly, I, I saw you were tweeting about a, a squirrel that was killed by New York State operatives on Saturday. And have to admit, uh, just based on a couple of tweets I put out Saturday and Sunday, the story about Peanut the Squirrel seems to have taken on a life of its own. Obviously, has nothing to do directly with Josh Rowley, but I know a lot of people are pointing out um, a certain a certain way of governing, I guess, and you t- you've tied uh, this type of governing that we see with Kathy Hochul and other Democrats to Josh Riley. Is, do you think that could have any impact on the way people vote tomorrow in this congressional race? Well, first, you know, I mean, Josh Riley's campaign sort of dismissed it as hokey, but I mean, we, we know this. I mean, I, he wouldn't know this. He, he hasn't lived in New York for the last 20 years, certainly not upstate New York. I mean, my gosh, uh, in order to come back to run for this office, he moved to Ithaca. He didn't move to Endicott. But we know uh, in upstate New York what it kind of feels like. I mean, we lived through... Uh, the Cuomo administration with, you know, sort of heavy handed government. Uh, we lived through them calling us, uh, uh, names, right? Kathy Hochul uh, said, if you, if you don't agree with her two years ago, get on a bus and leave for Florida. Uh, two days ago, Kathy Hochul said, if you don't agree with her, uh, you're un American. And then, yeah, in some ways, I mean, it, it is government overreach. It's very emblematic. I mean, there is no reason for the Department of Environmental Conservation uh, to raid a person's home, by the way, ask the citizenship status of his wife, take a pet, a, a, a pet, by the way, on a rescue farm. I mean, keep in mind, you know, we have these in upstate New York all, all over. Take a rescue pet and, and kill it. I mean, it's just, it, it's just emblematic of that kind of heavy handed uh, government that doesn't seem to actually respect people. And so for me, and, and I'll, I'll take this opportunity to, to point out, I mean, I mean, what Josh's campaign has been either, you know, lying about him or lying about me. But, but you know, having actually held elected office, having put my hand on a Bible and actually taken oath of office to uphold the Constitution, I know that this is a sacred relationship. It's not it, it, it isn't a sport. It's not a game. Uh, it, it's a sacred relationship. And the job of the elected official is to humble themselves and to serve people. And I and I've actually had I've actually had to run government where, by the way, during the pandemic, had to make a lot of really tricky decisions. But we were always, those decisions were always based on respecting the rights of others. And so when, when you hear the governor of the state of New York, who, by the way, is, is fueling and funding Josh's campaign, they, they set up offices in counties, they spent $23 million. I mean, Kathy Hochul is trying to buy herself back congressional seats that she lost two years ago. We know what that looks like. We've lived in New York long enough to know what that kind of politics and policy looks like. It looks like what you saw in a, outside of Elmira with the DEC overstepping. It looks like the property taxes Endicott and Vestal and Binghamton residents pay that are just too damn high because the state doesn't want to balance it, its books. It forces costs onto property taxpayers. And it looks like cashless bail and sanctuary city policies that seem to put criminals and people who enter this country illegally before the folks who are struggling just too hard. And so I will tell you this last week, our early voting enthusiasm is high. We have had record turnout, 
mind you, um, uh, enthusiasm on, on both sides. But we are outpacing uh, ourselves from two years ago on, on our side uh, by, by significant numbers. People are fed up. Now, I understand you don't like the ads any more than any of us do. I mean, quite frankly, you and I have talked about this before. I, I think there should be actually global limits on how much could be well, spent. Well, I, I get the, the sense from talking with both you and with Josh Riley. Neither of you really are enthusiastic about the type of TV advertising that's been on virtually every TV station in the congressional district. The only people uh, happy about the TV ads are the people that run the TV stations. They're raking in well, millions yeah, and not, millions yeah. and millions of dollars in this campaign. They're yeah, the happy the ones. Yeah, the only difference, though, is, and I, and I take issue with this, is I'll, I'll tell you that you know I, I don't like the tone and tenor, uh, honestly, of, of, any, of any of it, but Josh seems very happy uh, with uh, the ads that, that just, just lie about me. I mean, you know, the ad we talked about a week ago about this, this farmer who, by the way, says he's a farmer, says he's a Republican, says he won't vote for me. He's not a Republican. He sold his farm two years ago, and he doesn't live in the district. Or the birth control ads that, that, that are popping up in front of young people, particularly, particularly young women, saying to them that, that Mark Molinaro opposes access to birth control. Hell, when I was in the state legislature, I voted to ensure access over the counter to birth control. I, I, I sponsor and seek to sponsor the legislation that would protect access to birth control nationwide. And, and it's that kind of dishonesty that he doesn't distance himself from. I, I will. I mean, I, I, I think that we should be upfront with people. And, and that's why I show up. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I was out in Lyle to the uh, Lobster Bake, Rotary Club Lobster Bake. And I'll tell you, there were uh, a handful of people who clearly were not supporting me. And, and, and I had the same conversation with them that, that, that I'd have with anybody else. They have right to, to ask you questions and get answers. I just don't think he understands it, and he certainly didn't put it into practice. We do, because I, I, tr I truly mean this to all of you listening. I won't always get it right, and we won't always agree, but I will always work hard to try to get it right for you, because, it's, because I actually believe in the communities that I represent and the people and the job of public service. I believe in it and care about getting it right. So I get the sense that in addition to, of course, traditional media and now being inundated, bombarded by text messages and phone calls uh, from the campaigns, that uh, also social media apparently is viewed as playing a, a key role in this uh, campaign. Um, both your campaign does a lot of uh, tweeting. That's what I call it, Twitter. Uh, despite what Elon Musk has rebranded it. Uh, so and I, I found it fascinating. Your campaign tweets about the squirrel situation at 1247 on Saturday afternoon. And then 12 minutes later, Josh Riley's campaign is responding and saying Mark Molinero's closing argument, whatever the hell this is. That's a direct quote and then points to your tweet from just 12 minutes earlier. I mean, it's to me, it's remarkable that the campaigns are paying this much attention to social media. Well, I, I will say to you that we use social media to, to communicate messages. I'm, I'm actually uh, not on social media. I, I, I prefer uh, not to. Not to <laughs> no, too, I prefer too not engaged. to, too, but I, yeah. I, I, I have to because of my line of work. I, I, hey, fair enough. Yeah. But, but let's just go back to that. That, by the way, and again, I know that some can dismiss it, but, but that, that, that post and repost, is emblematic of their campaign. Think about it for one moment. We weren't saying uh, this was some outlandish thing. This is the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation got a warrant. I mean, there are murderers living uh, in in our. There are rapists living in our community. You know how difficult it is to get a search warrant or a wiretap. Uh, the Endicott police, right, get get informed that there's a Peruvian serial killer living in Endicott. And yet they have no capacity to intercede because of sanctuary city policies, the ones that my opponent embraces. They can't get, get involved in those kind of cases. But the DEC of the state of New York feels so empowered that they get a search warrant that a half a dozen uh, law enforcement show up at a guy's uh, rescue farm and, and take, his, take his pet squirrel. Now, is this, is, you know, uh, it's just simply emblematic of the way in which government too often acts. And Josh Riley's campaign's response is, what are you guys talking about? Whatever the hell that means. What it means is that when we woke up in the middle of, at the, towards the end of COVID, and they were still telling, they were still telling you couldn't go to the gym before 10 a.m. or after 11 p.m., or you had to have 
drinks with your with your buffalo wings or when the governor overreached and signed orders. By the way, just today reported that he actually has notes now, Andrew Cuomo, on the nursing home order that ultimately led to the death of, of, of those struggling with COVID. Uh, it is it is simply this kind of government that thinks because they're only one party, because there's no one holding them accountable, that they can do whatever the hell they want. And so what the hell it means, I would respond to the Josh Riley campaign, is it means that too often in New York, a state you wouldn't understand because you haven't lived here for 20 years, the state of government overreaches too often. It's why the restaurant, you know, consuls in, uh, in, in Endicott, uh, you know, uh, why they know that the labor law is 172 pages long. And, and there's more regulations being put on their backs. Or Judy Whitaker, the local farmer, knows that when the DEC says one thing, the, the Department of Agri- or Ag and Market says something else. And it's confusing because the government doesn't seem to care about you. It just seems to regulate you. And so, Josh Riley, what the hell it means is that our government is so broken and corrupted that it does need people who are going to push back. Kathy Hochul is going to be governor for the next two years, like it or not. Josh Riley's going to push back on this. No, he doesn't even think it's relevant. I push back on it, not to be a partisan, but to be clear that there are people who deserve to have somebody speaking for them. And it, and for me, that's critically important. And by the way, I do it for Republican or Democrat. I, I put, push back against George Jackie on, on, on policies when he implemented them. Uh, that didn't make sense. Because ultimately, the, the sacred relationship you have in public office isn't between you and the other offices. It's between you and the people. And ultimately, that constitution. So I, I, what the hell it means, Josh, is it means that our government is too bloated, too broken, and often too arrogant. And it needs people like us who have lived here, worked here, and fought here to simply say, you know what? That's overreach. And you should, and you should be held accountable for it. It's 1023. We're speaking live with Congressman Mark Molinaro on this day before Election Day. One of the tweets from Sunday afternoon from Josh Riley's campaign said, Mark Molinaro has been in office for 30 years and he's been an anti-choice extremist every step of the way. I believe women's health care decisions are women's health care decisions and politicians like Molinaro should stay the hell out of them. That's a direct quote from the tweet yesterday afternoon. I know we keep bringing this issue up, but clearly Josh Riley and his campaign believes this might be the, the key issue if if he's going to be successful in unseating you. They, they believe that lying about my position on on health care for women is the way in which they can win. And that is, that is what they believe. I believe uh, that when it comes to health care, that the decisions ought to be made between a woman and her physician and nobody else. And I will continue to oppose a national ban or any infringement by the federal government on the rights of New Yorkers. They literally have an ad saying, I oppose a bill that I've sought to sponsor to access uh, birth control. It, they, they know they're dishonest. And so, so, so they just continue to feed this argument. And then I'll just take one other issue. It is true that in 1995, as a 19-year-old, encouraged by Republicans and Democrats in my home village, I was asked to run for village office. For, for, for village office, I had worked for a state assemblywoman as an intern. She was a Democrat. I loved Eileen Hickey. She lost a, a battle to cancer. I served with her, and I loved her. And she taught us about public service. It is true that for the 12 years I served as mayor, I actually helped rebuild our community uh, and revitalize our economy. It is true that after a horrific rape of a young woman and her daughter, I helped uh, ensure that, that that family had the support and our community had safety and security. It is true as a state assemblyman, I fought to clean up the Hudson River and, and push back against policies that continue to raise property taxes in New York. In fact, as a state assemblyman, voted for the largest middle-class tax cut in the history of the state of New York. And it is true as a county executive, I led efforts to rebuild mental health services and substance use uh, disorder treatment programs and help those with intellectual, physical, and developmental disabilities. It is not true that I've spent the last 30 years on the other side of that issue. It just simply is It is simply a lie. And in Washington, Republicans and Democrats know my position. It's the reason. It's the reason there is no national abortion ban. It's the reason they have, there is no ban on access to birth control because I use my vote to stand up for women uh, and stand up for their, their rights to access uh, the treatment and the care that they, they choose to access. That is true. And Josh is lying. You voted early, as many New Yorkers already have. 
Uh, and I know in the past you have said you voted against Donald Trump. Did you vote against Donald Trump? Or you will say well, you never, didn't. You I didn't, didn't say that. No, I no, say no that. I know. I, I, as soon as I said that, I, I know you didn't say that. You're, you're, you're good enough to, to know not to put the wrong words. Yes. In my mouth. Oops. Oops. That's the beauty of live radio. I voted Anything, for Donald Trump. Yeah. I voted in 2000. You did vote for Donald Trump yes. this year. I but did, you didn't. I, I but you didn't in the past. I believe you said in was it 2016 that you did not vote for Donald Trump in the election that he ultimately won. I believe at this moment in time, we cannot simply allow a government that has broken so much. Whether it's the southern border, I mean, it was only how many only months ago we were paying nearly five dollars a gallon for gas and waiting three hours in line to get to get formula for babies. Um, I just don't believe uh, that uh, the vice president is capable of solving the problems she helps create. And I want a government that is focused on securing our border, making us a safe at home and, and making us more affordable. And I'll tell you this right now. Uh, I, I believe that upstate New York will will prosper and, and be much more successful when we're working to secure the border and drive down costs. So, yeah, that's that's how I cast my vote. If you don't win re-election, are you out of politics? Will this be your last campaign? Bob, we're going to win on uh, the end of the day Tuesday, and anybody who ever answers that question any other way uh, isn't in it uh, for the right reasons. I tell you, we were out. Uh, I left at 6 o'clock yesterday morning, uh, and uh, we were, I think, about seven or eight stops yesterday ending uh, in deposit uh, 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 just down the road from you all. You know where that is. Uh, at, with, a, with a small group of voters who just wanted to get questions answered. Uh, I, I got home at about 10 p.m. last night. Uh, it's, it's the way it works. Now, I will have likely visited more places uh, in, the, in this last weekend than Josh has in a whole week and a half, uh, but I, I, it's just important. I mean, we're, we're doing interviews everywhere. Do you know, the, read the interview. You know this. You're a good journalist. The number of interviews where we're the ones answering and the Riley campaign declines to comment. It, it's just not a. It's just if you feel like often you're on the inside, on the outside looking in. It's people like Josh who are on the inside. They think that they could just hide behind the ads and not answer the questions. We show up. I show up, and I'll talk to anybody uh, under any circumstances. We were at the uh, uh, at the Sons of Italy on Saturday night. Had a great another 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 dinner again, talking to people, but with whom they may agree or disagree with me. Uh, it's just important. And so I so we're working uh, to represent, and certainly I think we're going to win uh, uh, when the polls close on Tuesday. And don't forget to vote. If you haven't already, please make sure you show up. This is not the year to stay home. Republican, Democrat, not in a row. If you're undecided, please give me the opportunity. Uh, I, listen, I want to secure the border. I want to drive down costs. I want to make our community safe. I'm going to continue fighting for those with mental health issues. And, and, and the people who know me know how much, uh, how important it is to fight for those with intellectual, physical, and developmental disabilities. Give me that opportunity. I'm the second most bipartisan member of Congress for a reason. I'll work with anybody who wants to solve problems. One final question. What do you make yes, of sir. the behavior and some of the comments of Donald Trump over the last several days in his campaign rallies? I mean, you'd have to point to anything specific, but I listen. I, I think I think Donald Trump. Is I don't want. Well, Donald I Trump. could point to a lot of things specific, including the um, the comment that some people took to to uh, be that he wouldn't mind if somebody shot at at reporters yesterday, no, or what some that people that, that, were no, saying no, was a simulation of a sex act. I mean, there a lot of things have happened over the last week and, with and Donald Trump things, and his campaign and events. And a lot of things get spun uh, a lot of different ways. Uh, what I would tell you is that I think it's, I, I, listen, I, I try to comport myself in a way that is reflective of uh, of, of, uh, of of what people expect of me, and, and and by the way, what I expect my kids to emulate. Uh, listen, Donald Trump. Well, what, would you Trump. want your kids to act like Donald nah, Bob, Trump? I'm not going. Bob, I'm not going into that one. The president is uh, is authentically him. You know what you're going to get, and I think we're going to get somebody who's going to fight for this country. But I do think it's equally offensive. Uh, and by the way, um, almost always overlooked uh, by some in the media, perhaps not you. Um, you know, when you have the pre- when you have the vice president saying, uh, you know, he's a fascist, or you have Democrats in New York saying that the Madison Square Garden uh, uh, rally was a Nazi rally. You had MSNBC actually showing Nazi footage as Jews were celebrating in Mass- Madison Square Garden, as good New Yorkers were se- celebrating in Madison Square Garden. You had the president of the United States say the only garbage he saw was the garbage uh, where the people supporting Donald Trump. And then you had the governor of New York say that if you don't vote her way, 
and you don't agree with her, you're un-American. I think everybody ought to take a breath uh, and cool it because you know what? I serve great Americans and good, decent people, Republican and Democrat, and uh, and I'm going to continue to speak up and fight fight for them. And one thing, do you think Donald Trump is showing any evidence of mental decline over the last several weeks? Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. And I, I having having seen what I saw, and, and I, by the way, I, you know, I, I interacted with President Biden on a number of occasions, and I just would tell you that, that we saw the decline, and what the Democrats did was was cover that up. They covered it up, and, and, and then when it was clear they couldn't cover it up any longer, they jettisoned him. I, I don't think anybody gets to uh, hold the monopoly on uh, on on what is or is not, uh, you know, uh, partisan or political. But I. I just don't, you know, I, I think what we've experienced these last uh, four years uh, is uh, is uh, is so so troubling. It's time for change. Congressman Mark Molinaro, thank you. And just so people in the interest of fairness know, Josh Riley is welcome to call in between now and noon if he uh, wishes. I have no, no doubt he might. Uh, but, Bob, it's always a, a real pleasure to talk with you. You're tough, you're honest, you're decent, and I appreciate the questions. All right. Thanks for your Thanks. time. Have a good day. Be well. Don't forget to vote. Thank you. It's 1032 WNBF. Again, we're always striving to give people some information in real time and hear candidates talk. By the way, there will be no candidates on tomorrow unless there are extenuating circumstances. On Election Day, we don't do talk with candidates while voting is underway. Plus, there's something really, really newsworthy that would justify it. But today is the final day for candidates to be able to answer our questions, which I think is a good thing. You know, some candidates are, are going to be busy doing other things, obviously. But, hey, the program, we know what hours the program is on. The program seems to be on every day from 9 to noon. And candidates who have been on in the past are welcome to call in sort of a final word thing about the questions here on the station there are no questions in advance it's not like maybe some debates or some interviews where questions to a candidate or to an incumbent or whatever are provided in advance that's not how i operate i'll ask my questions sometimes the candidates might like the questions sometimes they may dislike them and, of course, it's always guaranteed. The only thing I know about doing interviews is there will always be questions that you would have asked. But that's that goes with the territory. I understand it. Yeah. When I'm listening to an interview, I have questions that I would ask, and, you know, I, I share your frustration. 607-772-1290. Live, local, for you. Binghamton now. WNBF. Jim from Binghamton. Good morning. You're on the air. Hi, Bob. I just wanted to give you a little info about Mark. Uh, my wife and I have an autistic son. He lives in a local group home with three other men. Uh, Mark Marlonaro visited this group home over the summer. He spent a few hours with, with the residents and the staff. He wasn't there 15 minutes and for a photo op and, and split. He wasn't out of there quickly. Mark has a daughter on the spectrum. He didn't mention that to you when, when you interviewed him. He's a sincere person, and in my opinion, he's not a phony. Now, the other item I called about is um, Kamala Harris, uh, vice president, says that our immigration system is broken, but I don't understand how enforcing immigration laws would be considered uh, the system to be broken. Um, it shouldn't be too much of an effort for her to allow the border enforcement patrols to do their job. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. All right. I appreciate your call. Thanks for listening. Thank you, sir. 1037 WNBF. Everybody's opinion is valued on Binghamton now. Vinny from Binghamton. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Bob. I just heard our uh, representative, Mark Molinaro. Um, you know, it's it's so funny. Bob, hey, by the way, great questions. I don't care if the callers call in after this and say, why'd you do that? But you actually exposed him with easy questions, easy questions. 
You know, he asked Mark. Mark said, well, you know, Josh Riley, he, you know, he won't answer this. He won't answer this. He won't give the questions. You asked him something very, what do you think about your, your leader? What do you think about the president and this stuff? Well, well, you know, look, 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 you know, the way Democrats treated Joe Biden. Well, well, how did the Republicans treat Mike Pence? They wanted to hang him. You know, you guys always try to skirt around what this guy does. This is the president of the United States, what he continually does. And one more thing about the border. And I'm going to bring it up like I said before. First of all, you got to understand how the border works. Our border is broken. You can take three, you, what was that? You can take all the so-called illegals out of here. Do you, Bobby, I read, a, I read an article the other day. Do you know how much it would take, how much money it would cost this country to take all these illegals that Donald Trump is talking about? $315 billion it would take to get all these so-called illegal. And how are you going to do it? How are, you going to, how are you going to know the difference between these illegals? Do you know how long this is going to take? And they'll be back in here within five years? Our system is broken. And you talk about the border agents and the asylum agents. That's in the, that's in the um, contract that I keep telling everybody, why don't you read it? So you can understand what's going on at our borders. Quit listening to these politicians. Read the damn bill. And then you'll get some knowledge about what's going on at our borders. And until then, these politicians love how inadequate you are about what's going on at our borders. Because the majority of American people are too lazy to find out what is really going on down there. You can look it up online. Look at that border. And they know it. They know it. They know it. They know it. That's what's wrong with our borders. But, I mean, until you, if you want to keep hit yourself in the head with a stupid stick, be my guest. All right. Well, we'll see what the other viewers have to say. We've got uh, more calls coming up. It is a good Monday morning to talk on Binghamton Now. And we did speak at length with Congressman Mark Molinaro to start this hour. And, of course... In the interest of fairness, we're willing to talk with his Democratic challenger, Josh Riley, if he calls in before noon. If he calls in tomorrow, we don't talk with candidates on Election Day. It's sort of a long-standing policy. When people are voting on Election Day, we generally will not talk with candidates unless there is an extenuating circumstance. I mean, it might be breaking news tomorrow if... There's big breaking news about the Chick-fil-A in Johnson City. Well, obviously, all candidates would be welcome to react. That would be understandable and appropriate. It's 1041. More calls coming up with Bob Joseph. Binghamton Now, WNBF. Hmm. That's unusual. It's 1044 at WNBF. More calls more often. DJ in Binghamton, you're on the air. Good morning, Bob. How you doing, bro? Oh, I am well. <laughs> hey, you know, everyone's talking about uh, voting. You know, freedom is not free, but freedom is wonderful. And we all have the chance to express ourselves and do what we feel. Listen to your heart. Get to those polls and listen to your heart. I'm excited. I can't stop smiling, actually. To, to be a part of this blessed country, man, where we can do anything we want. You know, people make it seem like we're prisoners here and oh america well we can't do what we want well let me let me clarify what i mean by that i'm talking about people who say if you vote if this person becomes president america is ruined it's like hell it's you know you're burning up whatever they say that's not true no i agree with that but you know, yeah. don't come on the radio and say you can do what you want because well let me clarify in, in the mean, usa I mean, today you can't do what you want <sighs> Bob, you've known me for a long time. You know I don't mean break the law or hurt people. I mean, you can you can be free to go. Get in your vehicle and drive. Go have dinner with your family. Walk around the park. That's what I mean. You're free to do what you want. Oh, I know that. No, I'm That's not. I mean. I'm not saying that I don't value our freedom, but it's basically you can do what you want unless they say you can't. So let's let's exactly. be crystal clear. Exactly, crystal clear. That is 100 percent perfect and true. You can do whatever you want as long as they say. As long as they say you can. So, in in some That's respects, right. it's like it's like Russia or North Korea. They can do what they want. I mean, I've seen video 
um, from Russia and North Korea. There are a lot of people every day who are pretty much doing what they want. But oh, woe, woe to them if they do something that isn't allowed. That's like here. You don't do what's not allowed. About to serve the Lord, man, is so... Uh, we're in Jubilee. We well, there you go. Man. So, you know, yeah. hey, that's it's the, the bottom line. Obey the law. That's uh, whether you're in the USA or in Russia today. Obey the law and you're good. You're good to go. And I, hey, I don't take my freedom in the United States for granted, but I also know there are lots of laws and regulations that could get me in a lot of trouble if I don't adhere to them. So it's, you know, I know some people are saying, well, it doesn't sound like you're happy. No, I'm happy as a clam. You won't meet a happier person who has a radio show in Binghamton today. So I'm I'm Mr. Happy. But still, always when you say, oh, we can do anything. No, there's no place on the planet, as far as I know. Okay, the South Pole, if nobody sees you, you could do it. Or North Pole. You could do anything you want if nobody sees you. If somebody sees you and you're breaking a law... Hire yourself the best attorney you can afford. Bruce Barquette. But you can't afford him. <laughs> well, it's true. You can't afford him. Probably. It's 1048. Good morning. You're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Bob. It's Jeff from the town of Binghamton. First time caller. How are you? Good. Thanks for calling in. Thanks. Um, I listened to your uh, interview with uh, Molinaro, and I really liked what he had to say for 95% of the interview. And he really had me kind of swayed that uh, I thought my vote was going to go to him. I believe both candidates really have their faults, uh, uh, which is, you know, it seems to be a natural occurrence. Nobody's a perfect candidate, but. When you posed the questions to him about Trump, it really kind of brought me back to reality to the point where, you know, his words were he ran or he's running a respectable uh, race and and he wants to do everything above board. Yet when the former leader of our country um, doesn't hold himself to any type of standards and thinks he can do whatever he wants to do whether it's obscene or illegal or lying or anything. Um, Molinaro just bowed out, just completely silenced up because he was afraid to say anything bad about Donald Trump, even though you were hitting him with factual statements and things that can't be... I mean, you can't deny what the man has said and done and... You know, well, and that, that was one of the things, you know, I didn't want to have to get specific. I could have, but I also <clears throat> didn't think it was necessary because I guarantee that Congressman Molinaro knew what I was referencing. But he wanted specifics, and I didn't think it was necessary. I provided a couple of recent specifics, and I, but I could have gone into several. And it was unnecessary because I expected basically the kind of answer he he provided as as far as reluctance to say anything on a live interview against Donald Trump and i i also understand why that is from a political pr- perspective but i still thought it appropriate even though we'd already talked i think for nearly 20 minutes i still thought it was appropriate to ask about that especially just given the tenor of the last couple of weeks. And I will say the last couple of weeks, judging from the Republican candidate's behavior at rallies and in in, uh, interviews, I won't say I'm surprised. I guess maybe the only sort of surprise is sort of how low can you go? You know, but it's it's in keeping. You know, nothing, got to tell you, 
even if he truly went out on Fifth Avenue and started shooting people just to prove as, as if to prove some kind of sick point, even that wouldn't necessarily shock me. I would be gravely disappointed. But you know what? His, the point he was making with that sort of glib statement years ago, I think I think it's accurate. I think he could shoot people on Fifth Avenue and not lose some of his most ardent supporters. He would lose some, to be sure. Some people who are planning to vote for Donald Trump tomorrow, if he actually went out on Fifth Avenue and started shooting people, they'd say, no, I'm going to sit this one out, or maybe I'll actually vote for Kamala Harris because I don't want a guy who thinks he can go into midtown Manhattan and start shooting people. I don't want him in the Oval Office anymore. Right, and I don't want him in the Oval Office only because... You know what? He could, he could probably be a good president. He could probably get a lot of good things done. But being president of the United States also entails that you have to do it with a form of um, decency and honor. And that's why Donald Trump will never get my vote for president. I don't care uh, what he offers us and how he says he's going to fix things. And for Mark Molinaro to dodge to that point, which to to me and maybe to you too, and a lot of listeners is also, he's going to be sitting in the Oval Office and he's going to represent every person in the United States. Well, that's the thing. And the President of the United States, for better or worse, is the face of this country. <clears throat> you know, it's one thing right. if if nobody outside the U.S. had access to what our president does. And I have to also acknowledge at the same time, I'm um, not happy with the um, face that the rest of the world is seeing of our current president. It doesn't. Right. And again, I have nothing against Joe Biden, except he does not at this critical moment in our history. He does not do a good job representing what I want the USA to stand for. And, and that's it's a pity. So and and I, I I only wish him the best, the same as I wish Donald Trump the best. But I, I really think, you know, um, when it when it comes to our nation, we stand for something. We stand right. for at least I think most Americans, regardless of political party or whether you lean to the left or right, most Americans believe this country stands for morality and decency and doing the best we can for our people and also for the world. Right. But when you have a, you know, Mark, like I say, Mark Malinaro sounded really good today and he did it. But when you put him to the, when you put his feet to the fire, now let's say he wins. Let's say Donald Trump wins. I guess they're happy because, uh, you know, obviously it shows that, for most American people, they really don't care about that aspect. But if you were to ask Mark Milanaro what his mother thinks about the way Donald Trump has been running his uh, his uh, re-election program, and, you know, just because he's the one that brought her into his uh, 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 candidacy, and he's the one that had her on some of his, um, uh, you know, his his calls and his videos and things like that. So I'm just, I, I just can't draw, I just can't make an exception to when, and all he had to do was come out and say, you know, I don't agree with everything Donald Trump does, the way he runs his candidacy and the way he acts as a, as the way he acts in public and everything else. But I'm going to leave it at that. But no, I don't agree with everything he does. He couldn't even do that. He was afraid to say anything. And I understand because of the backlash. But sooner or later, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, gosh, how did I not come out and say, I think what he did was atrocious, or I think that was wrong, or even agree with you on some aspects. Forget the, forget the ideologies. When the, when the guy running for president of the United States is standing at the podium, um, making like the mic, he's having a sex act with a mic, and trust me, here's my problem. 
I'm legally blind, so I can't see a lot of the stuff that goes on. So I have to, I really have to pay attention to what's being said out there. Yeah. So I, don't, it, it I have was, no idea. It, it was just, like. it was just not pretty. Appreciate your call. <clears throat> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. You too. 1056, more calls are coming up. Binghamton Now, WNBF. And it is Monday, November 4th, 2024. The polls will open in New York State in 19 hours. Believe it or not, 19 hours. So if you're uh, interested in voting and have not voted yet, you certainly will have your opportunity tomorrow. There is no early voting today, by the way, in case you were wondering. Yes, in case you were wondering. Uh, Last hour, we spoke with Congressman Mark Molinaro live in the final hours of the heated campaign here in New York's 19th district. It's been watched not just in New York State, but even outside New York because it's, it's, um, Likely to be a very, very tight race, as it has been in recent years. So we um, were just about ready to talk with the Democratic challenger, Josh Riley. He just called in, and yet we just lost him. So, oh, I think he's back with us. Good morning, WNBF. We're live on a Monday morning, and we are joined now by Josh Riley, the Democratic candidate who is challenging the incumbent Republican, Mark Molinaro. Good morning. Hey, Bob. How are you? I I missed your um, segment earlier with my opponent, but I got a whole bunch of text messages from friends and family saying that I should call in and say hi to you. So, hi. Hi. Okay, that that's good. Hope <laughs> hope you have a great day. Bye bye. No, uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> as I pointed mm-hmm. out, because we did speak at length. I think we talked with uh, Congressman Molinaro for about twenty minutes, and I I don't I know your sure. time is valuable here, so we may not talk for twenty minutes. Although I, you know me, I could talk for for twenty hours uh, about about sure. anything and still not not be out of questions anyway so how are things going as you wrap up this campaign you're as i uh mentioned a moment ago the the polls are going to open here in new york state in less than 19 hours yeah well that's the, that's the biggest reason i want to call in and just i know you're doing this and i assume my opponent is too but just reminding everybody make sure you get out and vote this is uh going to be one of the it's projected to be one of the closest house races in the country uh your voice really matters in this election i know we're not a swing state for the presidential race um and control of the senate probably doesn't come down to to what we do here but control of the house certainly does and so it's really important for everybody to to get out and vote um, yeah, I mean, this last weekend, this, you know, the vote weekend was, was really exciting for us. We did events in, uh, in Binghamton, Ithaca, um, Hudson, uh, Ellenville, Monticello. Uh, so we were all over the district. Uh, we knocked over 40,000 doors as a team over the last couple of days, which is something I'm really proud of. Uh, I was out knocking doors, uh, myself down in Binghamton yesterday. Uh, for the campaign, uh, we've, uh, knocked on, uh, over 200,000 doors. Um, and that's, that, that's just something I'm really proud of doing that in rural upstate New York. You can only do that with a, a really, um, energized grassroots campaign. And that, that's what we've, that's what we've built here. Uh, one of the things I've been hearing a lot, uh, across the district over the last couple of days is how alarmed people are that the Speaker of the House just came here, announced that he was, uh, going to repeal the Chips and Science Act, which is a landmark investment in American manufacturing, and then immediately after doing that, went to campaign <laughs> campaign with my opponent. So uh, that's certainly on on a lot of folks' minds. Well, one other thing that, honestly, if somebody had told me a week ago that I'd be asking uh, Mark Molinero and Josh Riley about a squirrel near Elmira. I would say you got to be kidding me. Nobody is going to be talking about squirrels or raccoons in the Elmira area, and yet, sure enough, there there it is. We had talked a bit about the, the sad saga of uh, of Peanut on the program Friday, but uh, so Mark uh, Mark Molinero's campaign 
on Saturday afternoon puts out a tweet about, sadly, the death of Peanut, the squirrel. And then your campaign responds. You must have a rapid response campaign on Twitter because 12 minutes later, <laughs> I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking at the timestamps and I'm saying, well, that's uh, that was indeed a rapid response. And I'm looking here for the the basic thing uh, that, because the campaign put out uh, something about. Let me find the language because I enjoyed it myself. Even though we're not allowed to say hell on the air, more than, it seems like la <laughs> last hour w it was a, a new landmark because I quoted from from your campaign's tweet on on Friday. Whatever the hell this is about is, is Mark <laughs> Molinero's closing right. argument, and then I think Congressman Mol Molinero said hell probably four or five times, and you know I, I promise after after uh, today. I will refrain from using that word for at least a week. Anyway, so w what's all this about about the squirrel? I mean, obviously, nobody likes to hear about what happened there in Chemung County last week. It's, it seems like mistakes were made. But still, for that to find its way into a congressional campaign or even a presidential campaign, I, I just find um, intriguing, to say the least. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, my, my heart goes out to Peanut and his followers, but I have to tell you, um, I haven't had a single voter talk to me about this, and so I'm not uh, as focused on it as I am about things like getting Roe v. Wade back into law, uh, which is a thing I hear about all the time from Democrats and Republicans who think that women should be able to make their own health care decisions. Uh, most of the conversations I had with respect to current events over the last 48 hours had nothing to do with a squirrel and had everything to do with rebuilding American manufacturing and whether we are going to start making semiconductors and computer chips in upstate New York or continue to rely on Asian supply chains. Uh, so those are the things I'm focused on, bringing down costs for folks, uh, getting the corruption out of our politics. Um, those, those are the the conversations most voters want to have uh, with me. Uh, maybe folks are asking Mark about a squirrel. I, I, I don't know, but I haven't had it raised in any of my uh, campaign events. As far as the other really big issue, I mean, abortion rights is a very big issue for many in the 19th district. Also, the immigration crisis is huge, and both yeah. you and Mark Molinaro yeah. acknowledge that the system needs needs a lot of fixing and should have been fixed before now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think um, we haven't updated our immigration laws in 40 years, and you think about how much the world has changed, how much the economy has changed in the last 40 years. And I think the difference between my opponent and me is that he has tried to uh, politicize the problem instead of actually doing anything to solve it. Um, I, you know, I, I suspect that it was a political calculation on his part to say, if I actually do something to solve the problem, then what am I going to have left to campaign on? And I think that's reflected in the ads that your listeners are probably seeing. They're almost all, you know, dark and scary and negative ads about a problem that he refuses to fix. Um, I've been really critical uh, of both parties on this. I think the Biden-Harris administration acted too slowly and did too little uh, to address it. I think the Republicans in the House, including uh, my opponent, decided to um, let the problem continue instead of solving it because they thought that would be good for politics. And frankly, most of the people I talk to across the district, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, they're just sort of fed up with everybody and they just want some folks who are going to go and get serious about solving the problem. And so my plan is to send thousands of additional agents to the border. Uh, we should be deploying the most state-of-the-art technology to stop the fentanyl trafficking. Uh, we've got to make sure the farm worker visa program is updated so that our dairy farmers across the district uh, have access to the labor they need. Um, there's some real, it's a real serious problem. It, it requires real serious uh, solutions and, and people who are committed to doing that. Mark Molinero and many of his supporters, whether it's in interviews or on co with commercials, are trying to imply or suggest that it was your fault that the Peruvian gang leader wound up in this country and going from Texas over to uh, 
Endicott earlier this year that that somehow it's because of Josh Riley Riley and the policies that Democrats have supported when it comes to immigration. I, I don't think anybody actually believes that. It's, it's just like completely not true and also completely not believable, right? Like I I think this is just tells you everything that you need to know about how desperate he is to distract from his record of failure on this issue. What you would hope from somebody who's been in office for the last two years, what you would hope from somebody who uh, says that this is a big problem, what you would hope that they'd be campaigning on is their plan to solve it or the things they've done to solve it or their vision for solving it. And instead, what you're what you're getting is the same thing you've gotten from this guy for 30 years pointing the finger at everybody else. When he was in the state and local government, he would blame the federal government for all the problems. Now he's in the federal government, he's blaming state and local government, and even me, who's not not even in the government at all. Um, at some point, it's got to be stop pointing fingers and start uh, and, and start doing your job. I've been very clear, you know, I've been very critical of the Biden administration. Um, some Democrats get upset with me when I, when I criticize my own party on this, but... Um, you just got to say it like you see it, and I think everybody's failing on this. How close do you think this election is going to be? It's been close in in recent years. It seems the district is um, is quite evenly divided with with those who actually turn out to the polls. So when when all the votes are cast after the polls close at nine o'clock tomorrow night, do you think you're going to wind up having to wait for potentially days or longer to find out who the winner is? I, I think it's very likely to be very, very, very close. Um, I mean, you remember it was a different, differently configured district, but um, Anthony Brindisi's race in 2020 was decided by 109 votes and subject to months-long uh, recounts and so forth. Uh, our race in 2022 was decided by less than 4,500 votes uh, out of nearly 300,000 cast. So, uh, about a one in 1.6 percentage points, uh, one of the closest races in the country. And all of the polling and, and forecasts and models here are, are projecting uh, a very close race. The website 538 that does uh, forecasting is actually projecting this race as a deadlocked 50-50 tie. And so it's going to come down to who has a stronger grassroots operation. Uh, and I really, truly believe that that's us. Uh, we've knocked on over 200,000 doors as a campaign. It's, as I understand it, more than any red to blue uh, candidate in the country, um, or close to it at least. Um, and when I'm out over the weekend and we have uh, hundreds of volunteers knocking on tens of thousands of doors, uh, I find that very encouraging. I think folks who are, who are listening, it's not too late to get involved. We're going to be uh, continuing to get out and knock on doors over the next uh, 36 hours here. And if you're interested in getting involved in doing that, you can come down to our uh, campaign office, which is on the corner of State and Lewis, I think. Yeah, I think it's about two blocks from the station here. I think I've driven yeah, past right it around, a few times. Right around the corner from you. So one question that Mark Molinaro um, seemed reluctant to address, it was toward the end of our conversation last hour, and it doesn't directly affect the 19th district congressional race, but it does affect all Americans. It was a question about Donald Trump and his behavior mm -hmm. um, at campaign rallies and interviews and just basically things he said and even things he has done in the last several days that have raised eyebrows, yeah. even even among some of his supporters who have been somewhat surprised by the things he said and some of the things he's done. So people are, are asking is is there an indication of mental decline or is there something else going on with with Donald Trump that that should raise concerns among the American people as they vote if they haven't already voted uh yeah i mean i it's uh, it's fair to ask these sorts of questions i will tell you most of the questions i get from voters are about policy issues and not about the political personalities I mean, I, I do think there is um, reason for uh, concern and um, reason to be upset about some of the things that were said uh, at the rally at Madison Square Garden a week or so ago. I also think that 
uh, whether he misspoke or not, when President uh, Biden may have disparaged uh, Trump supporters, that that wasn't acceptable either. Um, we've got to get to a place in our politics where we're not referring to the other side as deplorable or garbage or the enemy or any of these things. And we've got to get back to a place where we realize we've got a lot more in common than divides us and focus on the big issues we're facing. Because, look, if we're, if we're just going to run around and disparage each other uh, based on who you voted for, we're never going to solve the big problems like bringing the factories back to upstate New York and fighting climate change. That's going to take a bunch of folks who are Republicans, a bunch of folks who are Democrats, and a bunch of folks who are just kind of angry at both parties <laughs> to come together um, and start breaking ground on, on on these plans to get American manufacturing back. So that's 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 really the thing I'm I'm focused on. I think a lot of folks are frustrated with uh, a lot of the rhetoric and, and and that kind of thing, and people just want to get serious about solving the big problems. So, what did you think when Governor Hochul on Saturday? said uh, people who vote for Republican House candidates, say like Mark Molinaro, I don't believe she mentioned any candidates by name, but Republicans said, she said, essentially, if you're voting for these Republicans in New York, you're voting for someone who supports Donald Trump and you're anti-women, you're anti-abortion, and basically you're anti-American. And she said, you, well, we we saw the interview on MSNBC. What do you make of that? So I haven't seen the, the interview. I think I read some headlines about it. But look, if you're voting, you're not anti-American. <laughs> so it's probably the most American thing you can do. And if you're voting uh, for me or if you're voting for my opponent and if you're voting for Harris or you're voting for Trump, the thing I care about is that you're voting. That is that is about the most American thing you can do. And nobody should be disparaged for exercising uh, exercising that that right and, and and that privilege and look, I you know this about me, Bob. I'm a Democrat. I come from a Republican family. Uh, you know what it's like in in West Endicott. People don't really care about your your politics. Uh, you know, for our, for our debate that we had a couple weeks ago, I had eight seats and I invited a, a, used about half of them on uh, friends of mine from UE. I think they're all actually Republicans. I think they're all Trump Riley voters or Trump Riley supporters. Um, and I just think it's everything that's wrong with politics when we're when we're disparaging people based on based on how they vote. We should get back to just some, you know, some some real conversations about the real problems people are facing. So it seems to me what you're suggesting is Kathy Hochul didn't do anyone any favors by by making that comment about people being anti-American or anti-women if they're going to vote for Republican candidates this week. It's not the way I look at it. I mean, I, I think if you're voting, I, I, I just like good for you if you're voting is kind of my view on it at this point. Um, that's it. Look, I, I think in our democracy today, we are in a lot of ways, we're so divided. Um, and I think that's because that's to the benefit of the special interests and the political establishment to divide people up and pit them against each other and make people uh, make people angry at each other and fearful of each other. Like, that, that's good for the entrenched interests, but it's bad for everyday folks. And at the end of the day, one of the things that has inspired me the most in this campaign, in the tens of thousands of miles I've traveled around this district, is just being reminded that we are not nearly as divided as the politics might make us seem. The number of conversations I've had with people who have voted Democrat, voted Republican, or never voted at all. And what folks want is the NYSEG bill to be lower. Folks want there to be more affordable housing for middle-class families. People want to have um, ha- have groceries that are affordable and not forcing them to make trade-offs between the groceries and the prescription drugs. Um, you know, none, none of that stuff should be as, as, as partisan as, as, as it's made these days. If you're voting, you're Amer- if, if you're voting good for you that is, is kind of the way I look at it. Josh Riley, the Democrat who is challenging Republican incumbent Mark Molinaro in New York's 19th Congressional District. Thanks for joining us. And thanks to uh, the listeners who called your attention to our special last-minute invitation <laughs> before Election Day to yeah. call in. She's probably listening. One of them, it's my, my family are, are, are frequent listeners, so there's some of them, but also Lena Bishop's probably listening. She's a, she's a dear, dear friend and another, another proud UE Tiger, so she flagged it for me too. So Lena, if you're listening, I got your text and I did what you asked me to do.
I, and I know she listens a lot. We hear from her with some frequency, so it's good good that we have regular listeners who are are monitoring and and when when we issue invitations, they can get the message uh, relayed to the appropriate person. Thank you. Hope you have yeah, a good day. Go. Thanks, Bob. Talk to you too. Talk to you soon. Take Bye. care. It's eleven thirty. WNBF Binghamton with Bob Joseph. It is the day before election day. We're live and local. Serving Binghamton and beyond. WNBF. In race 33, let's go back to the busy, busy phones. Vic, who joins us from Herkimer this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. I'd like to talk just a little bit about your show today. It, it was very interesting. Uh, I just want to remind voters of pre-election day that it was President Trump who put a ban on travel from China to the United States that met resistance from the Democratic Party, mainly Andrew Cuomo and Gavin Newsom, who openly stated, you're welcome to come to our state to people traveling from China during the height of COVID. It was Democrats that shut down the schools, that shut down the small businesses, that that kicked military members out of the military and thousands of nurses across the country weren't allowed to return to work because the Democrats uh, said, if you don't get the jab, you can't come here. You can't go to work. It was the Democrats that shut down our schools. And when you go vote today, remember that because they're lying. When they say, when Kamala Harris says she's in favor of fracking now, that's just for votes. She's just trying to get the people on the fence to vote for. And Bob, we talked about morality today on your show. I, I'd i like to say that um, it hasn't been mentioned that I heard on the show because I've been calling in for the last half hour. But Monica Lewinsky is backing uh, Harris today. And I, I, I think that has a lot to do with morality, given the the rumors or not the rumors, the innuendos of, of what they both did in office to get ahead. So when you go out to vote today, you keep this in mind. Well, you one so wait. Just before you go on, you can't vote today. You can vote tomorrow. There's no voting yeah, yeah, today. But, yeah. yes, tomorrow yeah. from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what do people need to keep in mind? They need to keep in mind that Trump had policies for America. He's the one talking about policies. We've never heard Kamala talking about policies. All we heard is her flip-flop and trying to get votes from the Republicans to her side. Because a lot of Republicans are, are Republicans are buying the nonsense that she's for fracking. She's going to shut it down as soon as she can. And, and that's to push it for her solar and wind farm friends. She, you know, it's such a corrupt government we have today. Both parties are so corrupt. It's amazing. But the party that's going most for America is the Republican Party. And when you go vote, you keep that in mind. Keep in mind, don't forget how thousands of people are put out of jobs, out of the military, uh, how our children were left a year without school, uh, all, be, all because of a virus. Uh, that it wasn't as deadly as they claim. And the only reason it killed so many is because Democrats put infected people in the nursing homes. All right. Appreciate your call. Let's see if we can squeeze in a few more calls before we wrap it up today. Carol in Appalachian, you're on the air. I just wanted to say that I did early voting. Um. And I was very surprised because I live in Tioga County that Josh Riley and Mark Molinaro were not on our ballot. Were you aware of that? Mm, yep. The, yeah. The uh, yeah the congressional district was uh, redrawn, and and I know <laughs> some some people in Tioga County were. Not pleased. And and surprised. And and yeah. surprised. I mean, one thing that's interesting to me, and I have to acknowledge that uh, with this redrawn district, you know, the candidates, Republican and Democratic candidates, haven't reached out to WNBF, so apparently they don't they don't think a lot of people in Appalachian and Owego and the rest of Tioga County listen to WNBF. But to me, it's shocking. It's shocking that they have ignored this station and that neither the Republican nor the Democrat have taken advantage of of this forum to reach out to Tioga County voters who are now in the 23rd Congressional District. 
Yeah, I I agree wholeheartedly. I I just I was I was shocked. I I did not know that that we didn't get to vote for those those two. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, and and I I have to accept a certain degree of responsibility because if I wanted to um, reach out to those candidates, I could have. But their campaigns, I think, I think should take shoulder most of the blame. That I don't even think that they've reached out to a great extent to the Binghamton TV stations. So it's it it raises some questions about both. Um, Nick Langworthy and Tom Carl, why they uh, have have ignored, for the most part, the Binghamton media market, which covers a good portion of the 23rd Congressional District. Seems strange to me. Yeah, I, I, I had never heard of... <laughs> I, I knew the one, but the, the male, I, I never... I never even heard of him. Well, I'm I'm looking at his picture now for the first time myself. Tom Carl, yeah. the Democratic candidate. Look, there's some signs around, you know, but it doesn't explain on on the signs that I've seen in Tioga County. Doesn't even identify him as a Democrat, probably because he knows that it would not necessarily gain him many votes in uh, um, majority Republican Tioga County. But my question to him is. Why hasn't he called in? Why Why have we not heard from the Democratic candidate? Nick Langworthy, uh, although he hasn't been on the program since he's been in Congress or, um, or during this campaign, he used to be on the program somewhat regularly when he was the state Republican chairman. So he's at least familiar with the station, but apparently he's written us off. Well... <laughs> I mean, which is fine. Hey, I you know I don't take it personally. I've obviously I've got I've got enough fish to fry here with with Broome County's races, but you would think, especially since you know a lot of people I am told in Eastern Tioga County get a lot of their news and information from WNBF and from the Binghamton TV stations. True. So True. I don't know why that is, but I. I know you're not the only one confused by what they saw when they they saw their ballot. Yeah, I <laughs> I was shocked. Yeah, well, you know, next time, next time, I guess I'll I'll do a better job at reaching out to the candidates. I guess I was too busy waiting for them to contact me. I, you know, I mean, here Josh Riley and Mark Molinaro, their campaigns are are in constant touch with me, and that's why you hear from them frequently there's there was no reason for the uh, congressional candidates who are running in the 23rd district why they couldn't have taken advantage of of being on this program several times if they had wanted to right right okay all right thank you very much yeah thanks i'm sure some listeners are saying what yeah yeah, watch <laughs> if you're going to the polls tomorrow in Tioga County. You can't vote for Mark Molinaro and you can't vote for Josh Riley. I know you're saying, who are these guys? Nick and Tom, Tom and Nick. But I don't know. I guess I guess they focused on the rest of the district instead of the eastern portion of the district. So whatever. Good for them. Wish them continued success. It's 1141. Uh, Bob from Fort Dickinson, you're on the air. Yes, good morning, Robert. Uh, wanted to invite you and the listeners to our monthly meeting, Citizens for a Better Room. We meet tonight at 6 at the Park Diner in the back room. Uh, certainly you're welcome, and everyone who's listening is welcome. We're a small government accountability group, and uh, meet the first Monday of every month, and that is today. So 6 p.m., be there. We'll share some stories and concerns and talk about current events. And uh, all are welcome. All right. All right. I won't be there because I have a meeting tonight at 7, so I can't be in two places at once. Well, stay tuned. You can also hear us Wednesday on uh, WHRW. Andy and I will be doing our... All right. I uh, hope, hope you kids don't start any more controversies. Stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bob. 
11.42 at WNBF. Wow, I've got a busy Monday. How can I fit it all in between now and midnight? I don't know. I'll do it, but I don't know. I've got a lot, lot to do over the next 12 hours and 17 minutes. Gary from Binghamton South Side, you're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Bob. Um, I want to talk about economics, if you allow me. Um, and particularly, the this is for small businesses. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. A lot of, a lot of your advertisers are small businesses. Um, I've witnessed that the small business owners are coming out against Trump's 20% tariffs. And they're suggesting that the, those 20, 20% tariffs are going to kill all their business profits. They won't be able to raise their prices. They won't be able to hire new employees because their profits are going to be down. And they're going to suffer increased, uh, consumers are going to suffer increased costs. And, um, you know, everybody talks about, well, prices are high, prices are high. Well, this 20% tariff is going to be transferred right to those people that are concerned about higher prices. Now, on the, with uh, Kamala, she is suggesting that she will uh, move the 5% or the $5,000 business incentive startup cost to $50,000, which will help new businesses and employ new jobs, which, again, are the backbone of our economy. And all those tariffs are going to go probably to the rich. But also the Trump is, cost is going to cut $2 trillion out of the budget, which will eliminate Affordable Care, the Affordable Care Act, eliminate Social Security in seven years, eliminate Medicare, gut Department of Education and EPA. And JD, the thing about um, Trump's uh, health thing, now if he gets into office and he and his health goes bad, J.D. Vance will take over. He's, J.D. Vance is going to be a lot worse than Trump in office. Okay. He's totally hooked up with the 2025 project, which is going to be a cruel event for America. Now, I've been watching a lot of uh, these interviews with the people in the Trump lines. And a lot of their, a lot of the questions they ask these people, these people can't answer, be, are, are not coherent. But they do have something in common. They love to hate Democrats. And I would suggest to you that a lot of this hate comes from hate radio over the years. And I, I truly believe that hate radio, you got Rush Limbaugh's and all, all the people on hate radio, has curved um, these people into a hate program, and they just will not vote for liberals anymore. And that's my thought. I think uh, small businesses are the backbone. They create more jobs than big businesses. We give huge incentives to manufacturing that comes in to create a minimal amount of jobs. But the small business is always going to be the backbone. A coffee shop gets your cups and lids and coffee from imports. They're going to raise their prices. People are not going to buy coffee anymore. They're going to eliminate jobs. It's just bad, bad, bad policy. A 20% tariff is going to come right out of your pocket. Appreciate your call. Thank you. It's 11 46 WNBF with Bob Joseph live and local. We welcome your calls. By the way, tomorrow, although we can talk generally about the election, we're not going to have any candidates on. Unless they're extenuating news developments that would make it really appropriate. But especially today, we heard from both first Mark Molinaro last hour and then earlier this hour from Josh Riley in the 19th congressional district race. So they both had, uh, I think, fairly equal opportunity to reach out to Binghamton Now listeners. Of course, the polls will open tomorrow at 6 a.m. It's about 18 hours from now. This is Binghamton Now. I'm Bob Joseph. You're listening to WNBF. For many in our... AM radio, FM radio, 
and WNBF online at WNBF.com. And best of all, the fabulous free WNBF app so you can stay connected to my favorite station. No matter what platform you enjoy, remember WNBF is for you. It's your station. All right, breaking news, breaking breaking now from the Albany Times Union. A story by Brendan Lyons, the managing editor. Listen carefully. The state police have now launched an internal investigation into a trooper's claim that he was shot in the leg by a motorist during a traffic stop on Long Island. Bo Duffy, a state police spokesman, tells the Albany Times Union... Quote, state police is conducting an investigation into the circumstances of the shooting involving Trooper Masia that was reported on October 30th. This remains an ongoing investigation and further specifics are not being released at this time. So it's a shooting that involved Trooper Thomas J. Masia. It was reported October 30th and now... There is an internal investigation. Duffy added that police are no longer seeking the Dodge Charger that was reported as being involved in the incident. Investigators searched the residence of Trooper Masia over the weekend as part of the internal investigation. According to two sources briefed on the matter, he was released from a hospital Friday afternoon, two days after police officials said he sustained a bullet wound to his leg on the Southern State Parkway. State police officials said Trooper Masia reported being shot after he pulled over to check on a stranded motorist who allegedly opened fire on the trooper through a window of his vehicle. This became national news. Uh, David Muir on uh, ABC World News Tonight was reporting on it. Talking about some sort of uh, search involved in this purported shooting. Sources said investigators are trying to determine whether the gunshot wound was self-inflicted or occurred during an incident unrelated to a traffic stop. Items were seized from Trooper Massia's West Hempstead residence over the weekend. As he approached the rear of the suspect's vehicle, he heard several pops and realized that he was wounded in his right leg, according to State Police Superintendent Stephen James. That's what was reported during the news conference on Thursday. Massia's father, Thomas, is a former NYPD cop who was among three officers arrested and charged in 1992 with a scheme to buy more than four ounces of cocaine for sale on Long Island. Sources briefed on the matter said the state trooper's body camera was not activated during the alleged incident last week. The camera is programmed to turn on when all of the emergency lights of a state police vehicle are activated. Only his rear emergency lights were activated during the alleged incident. State police said Masia told them he wasn't able to return fire. He took note of the vehicle's license plate number and began to apply first aid to the gunshot wound to his upper right leg. He later underwent surgery at the hospital. Police had said the suspect was a dark-skinned male who was driving a dark vehicle, possibly a black Dodge Charger with custom matte gray dual exhaust tips that had a temporary New Jersey license plate number on it. But again, they're not looking for that vehicle anymore. State police this morning said Masia has not been suspended and remains on active duty. So that's the latest. Brendan Lyons on top of that for the Albany Times Union. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. And it brings to mind an incident that happens here in Broome County some years back. It's 1153. WNBF with Bob Joseph. Let's take another call. Hi, you're on the air. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? It is Bruce, and I'm in Rochester. Hi. Uh, thank goodness for the Internet. I can listen to you anywhere. Uh, my comment about the election is actually uh, t- uh, closed captioning on TV. And if you've been watching the ads for both parties, you would notice that the Republican ads are never, ever closed captioned. And the Democrat ads are always closed captions, even local guys. And uh, it's just kind of unusual that the Republicans don't want the people who can't hear to vote for them. Hmm, that's interesting. I thought it was a law now that 
uh, all TV material, all content, including commercials. I thought now we're required to be closed captioned. Not yet. Not yet. We're still campaigning. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, thanks for pointing that out. I, you know, it's interesting here in our studio. I I have um, a news channel always on when I'm on the air just to keep track, see if anything breaking happens. And so it's always muted, but we have the closed caption. But I never paid attention to um, that matter with the commercials. So I'll be keeping track the next commercial break. Right. Thank you. I just I wanted to point that out. Uh, yeah. So, Thanks for noticing. Okay, take yep. care. Yep, you Thanks. too. Bye. Right. See, that's the type of thing I... That's the sort of thing I normally would notice, but I just hadn't noticed. Appreciate him for bringing that up. Hi, it's 1155. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? Uh, Martin from Binghamton. Hey, Martin. What's up? Hey, good morning. Yeah, about Josh... Uh, I'm not about Josh, but about Marlon Arrow. Listen to that. And, you know, he said just a few months ago, gas was $5. No, it wasn't. And there were lines. No, there weren't. I mean, we have three gas stations right here in the first ward. And right now, gas is at 305. And just the, there's lines to get in that, into that station. Cause it's, and I was talking with a woman the other day. She says, oh, this is so cheap here. You know, and, and, and about abortion. I don't trust him about abortion. I mean, if he gets in, um, and about uh, and if Trump gets in, there could be a possible uh, ban. Um, you know, for the nation. And, hey, that's and about, unfortunately we got you in just under the wire. It's all the time we have for today's program. Okay, doc. Thanks, Martin. And that is truly all the time we have for today. Very interesting program. Tune in tomorrow on Election Day for an even more compelling program. I'm Bob Joseph on News Radio WNBF.